Welcome to WorkSafe 101, a basic introduction to essential job site safety, presented by Builders Mutual Insurance Company. Hello, I'm Sean Purcell, Risk Manager with Builders Mutual Insurance Company. Building a home is an honest, important, and gratifying way to make a living. It can also be deadly. Safety procedures and equipment are not optional. They are not designed to give you a hard time. They save lives, prevent devastating injuries every day. In a moment, you'll see a short but critical series of safety videos protect you on the job site. You owe it to yourself, your family, and your coworkers to pay close attention and ask questions. If you don't, it would be a mistake, maybe the last one you'll ever make. Safety benefits everyone. By incorporating safety rules, employees avoid injury as well as illness from exposure to hazardous substances. With fewer injuries, a business can be more productive and profitable. As an employee, you should learn to work safely and take all rules seriously, recognize hazards and avoid them, report all accidents, injuries, and illness to your supervisor immediately, inspect tools before use to avoid injury, wear all assigned personal protective equipment, on the other hand, it's management's responsibility to provide a safe and healthy workplace, provide personal protective equipment, train employees in safe procedures and in how to identify hazards. Everyone must be aware of potential hazards on the job. Poor housekeeping results in slips, trips, and falls. Electricity can cause shocks, burns, or fire if not handled properly. Poor material handling may cause back problems or other injuries. Tools and equipment can cause injuries if guards or protective devices are disengaged. Always use the protections that are provided on the job. Guards on machines and tools keep body parts from contacting moving equipment. Insulation on electrical equipment prevents burns, shocks, and fire. Lockout tagout assures equipment is de-energized before it is repaired. Personal protective equipment shields your body from hazards you may face on the job. In case of emergency, Understand alarms and evacuation routes. Know how to notify emergency response personnel. Implement a procedure for leaving the scene safely so emergency personnel can do their job. Wipe up spills promptly and correctly. The welfare of the community is also enhanced by providing cleaner air and water and less chance of dangerous accidents that can put lives and property at risk. It's a fact. Many accidents are preventable. Job site hazards can be avoided through rigorous training and administrative controls. However, when those measures are not available or prove ineffective, personal protective equipment can put a barrier between you and the hazards. Types of personal protective equipment. Hearing protection. Use when exposed to noise at or above 90 decibels, dB, TWA, time-weighted average. If you have to yell to communicate, you need hearing protection. Hard hats. Wear when exposed to electrical or struck by hazards or falling or airborne objects. Gloves and arm protection. Cover hands and arms when exposed to chemicals, heat, cold, radiation agents, or abrasive surfaces. Respirators. Should be used when exposed to harmful inhalation hazards due to chemicals. Respirators have intended uses. Ensure the respirator you are using is properly selected for the hazard to which you are exposed. For example, dust respirators are used for silica exposure when cutting block. Organic cartridge respirators are appropriate for trichloroethylene found in paints and resins. Safety harnesses with lanyards should be implemented when exposed to fall hazards of 6 feet or more. Eye and face protection. Glasses are intended to be used to protect from impact hazards like when using saws. Goggles protect the eyes from splash hazards. Face shields are intended to protect the face from splash hazards and should be worn with safety glasses or goggles. Steel toe shoes should be worn when moving or working around potential heavy falling objects. Remember, your knowledge and experience are your first lines of defense against job site hazards, but always wear personal protective equipment when conditions call for it. Falls are one of the most devastating types of injuries on a job site. When fall protection is in place and used properly, falls and fall related injuries can be prevented. There are several types of fall protection available. Guardrail systems also aid in fall protection. Fall protection practices. Assess the job site to determine if the walking and working surfaces have the strength and structural integrity to safely support workers. Workers exposed to falling six feet or more from an unprotected side or edge should be protected by a guardrail system, safety net system, or personal fall arrest system. 
A personal fall arrest system consists of an anchorage, connectors, body harness, and may include a lanyard, deceleration device, lifeline, or suitable combination. Workers in a hoist area exposed to falls of six feet or more should be protected by either a guardrail system or personal fall arrest system. Employees exposed to a floor opening more than six feet above lower levels should be protected by personal fall arrest systems, covers, or guardrail systems. Employees using ramps, runways, and other walkways should be protected from falling six feet or more by a guardrail system. Employees engaged in roofing activities on low slope roofs with unprotected sides and edges six feet or more above the lower level should be protected from falling by a guardrail system, safety net, personal fall arrest system, or a combination warning line system and guardrail system. Warning line system and safety net system, warning line system and personal fall arrest system, or warning line system and safety monitoring system. Employees engaged in roofing activities on steep roofs with unprotected sides and edges six feet or more above the lower level should be protected from falling by a guardrail system with tow boards, safety net, or personal fall arrest system. Guardrails. Guardrails protect you from falls that can seriously injure or even kill. The amount of protection guardrails provide depends on how they are constructed and maintained. Most guardrails are built of strong materials and are usually solid when first put up. However, guardrails are often abused, weakened, broken, or removed, and not replaced. Weakened guardrails are sometimes more dangerous than no guardrails at all because they give a false sense of security. As you go about your job, get into the habit of checking guardrails. If you discover a weakened or missing rail or section, correct the situation if you can or report it so that the hazard can be eliminated. If you bump a rail with material or equipment, check to see if it is weakened. If you discover a broken rail, upright, or tow board, repair it if you can. Otherwise, report it so it can be repaired. When repairing or replacing guardrails, use caution as you are exposed to the very danger that you are providing protection against. In 2010, falls accounted for 635 deaths among workers in the U.S. Among ladder-related falls, these are the most common contributing factors. Climbing or descending improperly, failure to secure the ladder at the top and or bottom, carrying objects while climbing or descending, and structural failure of the ladder. One of the most commonly used, often abused, and least noticed pieces of equipment on the job site presents a major hazard. With these practices, you'll be climbing your way to a safer job site. On a step ladder, don't climb higher than the second step from the top. On a straight ladder, don't climb higher than the third step from the top. Never attempt to move, shift, or extend the ladder while in use. Hold on with one hand when performing work, and never reach too far to either the side or the rear. For maximum stability, secure ladders at either the top or the bottom, or use a spotter. Check to ensure the ladder and your shoes are free of oil, grease, wet paint, and other slipping hazards. Be aware of broken or missing parts, energized electrical lines or equipment, ladders too short for work height, and weight limit ratings that are too low. Over 40% of the serious injuries to workers in the building trades are caused by falls from one level to another, usually resulting from the worker not having a safe place to stand. In this talk, we'll focus on the importance of and safety surrounding manufactured scaffolding. Tips on proper scaffolding use. Construct scaffolds according to specs, using screw jacks, base plates, and mud sills. Inspect scaffolds before each use. Install a guardrail or fall arrest system for scaffolds higher than 10 feet. Secure open sides and ends of platforms. Never climb a cross bracing to access the platform. Never move a scaffold with anyone or anything on it. Train workers how to spot and correct scaffold hazards. Additional tips for rolling scaffolds. Do not ride rolling scaffolds. Apply caster brakes at all times when scaffolds are not being moved. Watch out for holes in the floor and overhead obstructions. The working platform height of a rolling scaffold must not exceed four times the smallest base dimension unless guide or otherwise stabilized. Stick to these rules and falls should be kept to a minimum. Low voltage electricity can be extremely dangerous, particularly if you use portable electric tools. 110 volts of electricity can seriously injure or kill a person. Unsafe tool usage can lead to fatal electric shock, severe burns, or even a fall from one level to another. Electricity always tries to reach a ground potential and will always take the path of least resistance, including through the human body. When you work in a wet area, near a water pipe, grounded tank, or reinforcing rods that may be grounded, be extra careful to keep yourself as dry as possible. Stand on a wooden platform or use rubber boots. 
It is your responsibility to keep portable electric tools inspected and in good condition. Check tools and cords and turn in any that need repair as soon as you see a defect. Inspections. What to look for and avoid. Prohibit work on energized electrical circuits. Ensure that electrical cords are protected from physical damage and prohibit the use of frayed or worn electrical cords or cables. Ensure that only grounded type extension cords designed for hard or junior hard service. Type SJ, SJO, SJT, SJTO, S, SO, ST, and STO are used. Ensure that portable electric tools and equipment are either grounded or of the double insulated type. Ensure that all construction power is protected by GFCI, even if the outlet is not. Ensure that each 15 or 20 ampere, 120 volt AC receptacle, not part of the permanent wiring of the building, is protected by either ground fault circuit interrupters or an assured equipment grounding program. Ensure that equipment and cords used in wet or damp locations are approved for such conditions. Ensure that when a circuit breaker is removed from a circuit breaker panel, it is replaced with either a breaker or a blank. Ensure that unused openings in electrical boxes are effectively closed. Prohibit bypassing any protective system or device designed to protect employees from contact with electrical current. Ensure electrical equipment is used only as approved and listed. A defensive driver must be able to accurately predict the outcome of a traffic situation in order to apply the appropriate defense in time to prevent an accident. The formula for defensive driving is see the hazard, understand the defense, and act in time. All drivers must apply this formula to prevent accidents in spite of the actions of other drivers or the presence of adverse driving conditions. Let's take a closer look at this formula and how to apply it. 1. See the hazard. Think about what may happen as far ahead of reaching a situation as possible. Never assume that a condition will have passed before you approach it. Here are some examples that could result in an accident. An approaching vehicle is starting to pass. It looks like he will complete the pass in plenty of time, but you are not really sure. What is your defense? A vehicle is on the shoulder of the road, but you can't see the driver anywhere outside the vehicle. Will he open the door as soon as you approach his vehicle? A convertible with its top down is approaching you on a residential street. On the same side of the street, you see a lawn sprinkler that is spraying water onto the roadway. What might the vehicle do? Number two, understand the defense. There are specific ways to handle most situations. Review these situations so you can act quickly to prevent an accident. Let's look at a few more examples and briefly review the defense. Example, you're approaching an intersection on a wet, slippery highway. The traffic light has been green for some time. You see vehicles waiting for the light to change. Defense. You can't expect to come to a smooth stop when traveling on a slippery highway. Since the traffic light has been green for some time, anticipate a change. Slow down gradually well ahead of the intersection and apply your brakes carefully. Give yourself plenty of time. Example. You're descending a hill and you pump your brakes, but nothing happens. Defense. Don't panic. Downshift into a lower gear. Look for something to sideswipe, a snowbank, roadside brush, or a guardrail. Use your horn and flash your lights to warn others that your vehicle is out of control. Do whatever you can to prevent bodily injury. Vehicles can be replaced. Number three, act in time. Once you see the hazard and decide upon a defense, you must act immediately. Never assume the condition will clear up. Defensive driving does not come easy. You must constantly improve your skills of observation and coordination. Go over situations in your mind and plan your defenses. Seeing the hazard, knowing the defense, and acting in time will help keep you safe. Preventing a back injury is much easier than repairing one. Because your back is critical to almost every move you make, it's important to take care of it. Most back pain arises from using your back improperly. Here are a few basic rules to help keep your back in good shape. Exercise. Strengthen your back and stomach muscles through regular exercise. Manage your weight to reduce strain on your back and stomach muscles. Your doctor can provide a list of exercises and recommend a responsible diet. Maintain good posture. Sit and stand straight with your head up and your shoulders back to ease pressure on your vertebrae. Lifting objects. Plan your lift. Position yourself in front of the load, one foot slightly in front of the other for balance. Slowly squat down by bending your knees only. With both hands, bring the load as close to your body as you can. Lift with your legs, not your back. Slowly straighten out your legs until you are standing upright. If you need to turn at the side, move your feet around. Do not twist at your stomach. Reverse the lifting procedure to set the load down correctly. If the load is too heavy, bulky, or awkward for you to lift alone, get help. As you've seen, staying safe on a job site takes some effort. 
but by obeying some basic safety rules and wearing the proper personal protective equipment, you'll be doing your part to keep yourself and your coworkers out of the hospital, or worse. And if everyone does his part by looking out for himself and his fellow coworkers, we can all go home safely at the end of the day. Thanks for watching. For more detailed safety information, visit buildermutual.com/worksafe101.